And thank you there to the news reading team. And now we take a break from the news desk for one of our regular series of interviews. And I'm delighted to be joined this evening in the Talking Newspaper studio by Mr Ivian Thomas, who is known to all of you, I'm sure, as the musical director of Cor Maibion Llenelli. Good evening, Ivion. How are you? Good evening, Robert. Fine, thanks. Yes, and yourself? Good, excellent. And uh, it's a pleasure to have you here in the Talking Newspaper studio. It's a pleasure to be here. The, I just wondered, our regular listeners, I'm sure, would be delighted to learn a little bit more about Cor Maibion Llenelli. And uh, now, I gather the choir has its roots in Binier back in the 1960s. Yes, it was the, um, although I wasn't there at the time, it, the date was the 15th of October 1964. I believe that was the Thursday night of the general election where Harold Wilson first came to power. Good grief. I, I believe so. Yeah. So uh, Harold Wilson and, <laughs> and the Cormac Ben Cumberland, it was then, by the way. Right. So yes. it started off as Cormaibion Cumvelin, yes. and then it changed its name gradually then to Cormaibion Llenelli. Yes, because um, initially we practised uh, in Binia School, in the old primary school in Binia by Heola Bulch. Then we moved to the vestry of Berea Chapel, uh, still in Binia then, you see. And um, after that we moved uh, further towards Llenelli again. Uh, the movement was Go West, young man. <laughs> <laughs> and we went to uh, Llynhendi um, uh, Primary School, the Hall of Llynhendi Primary School. Eventually, from there on to Bryn right. uh, um, uh, School Hall. And then uh, we had various venues owing to some difficulties with uh, caretakers and so on. Um, we even went to Trostre Club, the social club in Trostre, which is very handy for some of the boys who like to be thirsty at the end of our practice. <laughs> but, um, and eventually we went back then to Bryn Charvel and uh, we moved, we've become a bit of a nomadic choir, you know. <laughs> uh, yeah. But but nowadays, I think you rehearse twice a week at Furness, I think? Twice a week at the new Furness Community Hall, which is a superb facility. Right, so it's Mondays and Thursdays, I think at 7 o'clock. And, That's uh, it, yes. and obviously anybody out there who hears this, if oh, they want to come pop along, along. Come yeah. along, they're welcome to either come listen to a practice, uh, which is virtually... A, a concert, really, mm. and um, I th- I thought is if they can put up with my uh, <laughs> criticizing the the other singing, and um, they, they can also come along with a view towards joining the choir. Right, so members of the public can come along and, and listen to a free concert in a yes, way, and, uh, yes, and perhaps potential members uh, as well. That's right, and you see the thing is when we have visitors there, the uh, the boys realise that. And they tend to be a, a little bit of a show off, and they tend to sing better actually when there are people listening to them. Right. <laughs> the, so, how many in the choir nowadays? I believe there are eighty-eight, eighty-nine, right. ninety-ish on on the books. Yeah. So it's, uh, it's still quite a strong choir. It's still quite a strong choir, not as strong as it used to be mm. numerically. Uh, it was well over one hundred and twenty. Right. But um, we can. Average on a good concert, especially home concert, you can get about 68, 65 to 70 on stage, perhaps. Right. Which that's is quite good. That's, that's very good when you consider yeah. that you know, choirs up and down the land, really. I find it hard yes. to uh, yeah, yeah, get members yeah, nowadays. Yeah. It is a difficulty to get members, especially the younger element. Mm. Uh, you're, you're not talking necessarily about the uh, the teenagers and the, uh, the 20-ish, but the people who have perhaps settled in the area in the 30s and 40s, we count those young. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it would be nice to get a few of those coming in, you know. Excellent. So what sort of, of a year has it been for the choir this year? It's been a very busy year. Mm. Um, although we, we didn't do the Nationalist Edward this year because it was in North Wales and problems travelling and so on. Uh, we had a very good, very successful annual concert in July where we featured songs from the shows and mm. songs from the musicals. It was a very light-hearted concert and um, uh, th- th- that, was, that was good preparing for that. But also the highlight perhaps of the year was the visit to Zetogen Bosch or Den Bosch as it's known in, in, in the Netherlands uh, to commemorate the uh, liberation of that city by the 53rd Welsh Division in mm. 1944, yeah. October 44. And that visit is only a few days, but it it's left uh, an indelible uh, memory mm. uh, on on the on those of us who are the 
pleasure of going there. Yeah. Well, I was lucky enough to accompany the choir on that That's trip. Right, and, right. Uh, yes, yes. and as I say, it was quite an action packed trip in, in, in that there were a great many events to attend. And, uh, no relaxation. No, at all, and no. Uh, it. it it was very moving and emotional. I think. It was. I think. Uh, it you was. know, I felt it, and it I'm was. sure the choir it members was. did. That it uh, was. It was. Especially when we saw we went to that uh, war cemetery at Uden, mm. uh, and seeing not just the the, the the Welsh boys had lost their lives, but the the age, the some of the um, aircraft crew that had been shot down. Mm. A lot of those were in ni- late teens, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one mm. year olds. And they must have been superbly brave, mm. you know, to fly over that place when it was occupied. Mm. And uh, it made one realise the immense contribution which they made to our, yeah. for our freedom. I, I know certainly the visit of the choir to the Netherlands was greatly appreciated by the civic mm. leaders mm. there in uh, St. Hogenbosch. And, mm. uh, and uh, say it was a very moving occasion and it was nice to see there were still some veterans attending yes, the yes, events and yes, although they're getting yes. on in years now. Yes, uh, yes. And uh, one gentleman from Yorkshire mm. was attached to the Welsh division, the 53rd Welsh. Uh, he was 95 year old and he was so moved when the choir sang Mavanui yes, uh, uh, as a tribute to him, he, a special request for, for he, he gave it. And it was wonderful to see these these people. Mm. Um, and there, there was quite a stunning concert on one of the the nights there. We, I think we took over the, what they call the Hieronymus Bosch Art oh, Centre yes, in yes, uh, yes. St. Hogan Bosch. And, yes, and Bosch a was a, yes. a, quite a bizarre medieval oh, yes, artist and yes. some of his sculptures and paintings yeah. are on the wall yes. and... Uh, it, 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 Very it, dubious. Well, yes, it, it is. It is quite unusual. You wouldn't find those in a in a Welsh chapel. No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> they were they were unusual to say the least. Yes, they were yeah. indeed, and uh, very Salvador Dali-ish, mm. I think. You know. The, and of course, you finished the year off then with your Christmas concert at Theatre and Yes, uh, and and that was uh, people are tell, telling me it's one of the best concerts we've given there mm. uh, as a Christmas concert, and very light-hearted again, and with. Uh, uh, audience involvement, audience singing, um, joining in singing with us, White Christmas, some of the carols and so on. It yeah. was good, enjoyed it. Excellent. The So what does next year hold for Cormac and Lally? It's a little bit of a wait and see, but mm. we know that the Estethwood is coming, the National Estethwood is in Cowbridge. Right. Hopefully we'll go to go there. It depends what the vocal resources of the choir are like, how were they singing at the time. There's a concert on the 30th of June with the Vancouver Welsh Men's Choir who are coming over, and that will be a Raniwa concert. Mm-hmm. Uh, that should be a good one. Uh, we've got a concert with Cor Kiriad, uh, the ladies' choir, the Llanelli Ladies' Choir, on the, I think it's in April sometime, I better not say a date just mm-hmm. in case I'm wrong, but they f- they are main guests, the Ridian. Right. So th- they've asked the choir to sing with them and uh, the Mill Voice is singing with them, and uh, we're looking forward immensely to that. Excellent. There's a St. David's Day concert coming up. We don't know who the artists there are going to be yet. And um, there's also a special concert, which um, a few of us are organising as a memorial to Gethin, Gethin mm. Hughes. Um, I know Gethin has done a lot of uh, concerts uh, for the Blind Society, mm. and um, uh, we are giving... a. Um, organising a memorial concert on the 19th of May and the, we're hoping to get raise money from that and form a sort of trust in Gethin's name to uh, encourage young musicians from Llanelli schools mm. to go f- to further their studies. And that'll be an excellent idea because, uh, I mean, all our listeners are very familiar with, yes, with Gethin yes, Hughes, yes. who sadly passed away last yeah, year, and yeah, uh, yeah, Gethin yeah. was an MBE and Llanelli's yeah. Mr. Ah, music in a way. He was, yeah. he was also a accompanist to the choir yes, for, yes, for yes. very many years. And, yes, uh, and some of the stories, you know, I love to put them down in a book. Yeah. Um, and it's, uh, we had some great times together. Excellent. Well, Ivion, it's been a great pleasure talking to you and uh, thank you for coming into the studio this evening and uh, perhaps we'll catch up again later in the year and find out how the choir is doing and obviously best of luck for the Nationalist Edward and we hope you bring back the blue ribbon for Llanelli. Who knows, it'd be a very good thing to do and we're looking forward to it. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you, you Robert. Thank you.